Well, hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Square the Circle music channel. It's your old pal, Mage. That's right. It's uh, Friday morning here in Western Oregon, and it's cloudy, and it's cold, and windy, and it's just wonderful. Um, I wanted to do a special episode for everybody today. Um, <clears throat> You've probably heard me talking about this quite a bit on my channel over the last few months. Um, I don't know, I guess I shouldn't say a few months, but it honestly kind of feels that way. Um, because this situation has been going on now for, I mean, well over a month. Um, and at its very worst in the last few weeks. Um, but, you know, Western Oregon is um well all of the pretty much all of the state of oregon save maybe just like you know a few uh, hundred square miles of the eastern portion of the state um is basically all one giant um you know uh, old growth forest uh temperate rainforest and um it doesn't rain as much as it used to <laughs> and um you're all well aware of you know climate changes and um, all sorts of things that are going on on a global scale um, but they all kind of like you know coalesce and um, you know this this situation is rearing its ugly head to every different region all across the globe in its own fine-tuned little way you know what I mean so here in this temperate rainforest of the Pacific Northwest, we have not been getting rainfall um, like we're used to. It's been progressively getting worse and worse uh, over decades. And now it's to the point where, you know, droughts are a, a, real, a real thing. <laughs> and um, forest fires, wildfires are just ravaging. Um, our great state um, practically every year now um, and I live in a very heavily forested area of uh, West Central Oregon and um, shit's on fire and it's been on fire for a long time and um, <clears throat> it uh, has some pretty serious health ben or <laughs> health repercussions um, to us humans, as well as every other living creature around here. Um, and it's this specific one, it's called the Cedar Creek Fire. Um, definitely not as destructive as the one we had two seasons ago, um, which made national news. Um, uh, what they call it? The Christmas, Christmas Farm? Is that what it was called? Christmas Farm Fire or something like that? Um, which basically completely ravaged the city of Blue River, Oregon, up on the Mackenzie, Mackenzie River. It crept pretty close to where I live here. Um, this one's a little bit further off in the south, to the south-southeast, um, closer to a township called Oak Ridge, Oregon. And um, it's just fucking awful. <laughs> and so, I didn't, I didn't do this little episode this morning to um, get all down in the dumps with you guys. Um, this is going to be a, um, a little bit of a uh, cleansing episode, because what we're going to do is we're going to, um, <laughs> we're going to throw some juju out into the universe, right? And hope it sticks. <laughs> um, we're gonna do some. We're gonna do some rain dance. Is what we're gonna do. Um, we're gonna. We're gonna praise the gods and hope hope that they uh, 
they shed some tears on us, for us, here in the great state of Oregon and, and do something and hopefully douse douse a bit of this situation the the fire itself is about half contained that doesn't mean the fire is getting put out <laughs> that just means it's you know they've stopped the spread up to about half of it probably the <clears throat> the half that is encroaching uh further west toward us um so i believe the western dividing line they've got it kind of somewhat you know, at a standstill. But we haven't had rain for 100 days, so uh, that's fucking nuts for <laughs> for Western Oregon. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's been some drip drops here and there, but n not even close to enough to make any sort of dent. Um, and, you know, rumor has it that um, it's on it's on the horizon, so... Here at the Square of the Circle Music Channel, like I said, we're gonna sling, slingshot some juju out into the universe and um, hope that the uh, the universe answers back with some, uh, you know, some relief, <laughs> some relief from the heavens. We're gonna talk about tunes that um, sing the songs of rain. Uh, let's talk about rain songs, shall we? Let's get the let's get the rain flowing. This is one of the first ones that came to the top of my head just because it's like opening track, A-side, one of the most monumental, uh, incredible pop albums ever created uh, by uh, homeboy Handsome Pants, uh, Peter Gabriel, of course, uh, first track on his um, probably greatest selling album of all time. So from 1986, right? Yeah, 1986. Red rain is falling down <laughs> over me. Such a great fucking song. And of course, a little bit dark and, and weird, you know, talking about red rain. But um, hey, I'll take rain in any <laughs> in any form, any color, doesn't matter. Um, so everybody spin that fantastic song this morning. That's, that's what I'm going to do. Get the, uh, get the clouds gathering and let them open up and pour red rain all over us. <laughs> Such a fantastic song, so emotional. Uh, his voice so, you know, sultry and delicious on this. I, I don't know how anybody didn't ever um, throw some shade at Dave Matthews <laughs> for basically like ripping off this entire album uh, completely. Like, I don't know, man, like especially Dave Matthews in his solo career stuff like he I think he did his first solo album in probably like 1999 or 2000 uh it was called Some Devil and yeah Dave Matthews just like you can tell just um absolutely worshipped this album this era of Peter Gabriel um because they sound a lot alike especially with similar um concepts and lyrically and stuff about you know the rain pouring down over me thing you know <laughs> but yeah like i said i'll take rain in any format i can get any color <laughs> even uh i've talked about this before prince i don't even like prince man but i'll take some purple rain <laughs> right now <laughs> i'll take any rain um but purple rains i don't know it's a fun song to just kind of like throw on and just kind of Get in the mix. Yeah, so spend some purple rain this morning, guys, for all your friends over here in uh, Western Oregon. Speaking of which, our favorite state, <laughs> our favorite uh, band. From our favorite state uh this group this is like soft soft jazz folk folk jazz uh group from here from eugene eugene oregon this one's called winter light uh this must have been like 73 something like that 74 uh particularly the track rainmaker track three on the b side everybody check it out this is just dripping with like i said just kind of like nerd soft jazz but a lot more kind of eclectic lots of interesting world instruments and stuff there's just like you know 
uh, soprano saxophone, oboe, uh, even some bassoon, and you know, the drummer plays like tabla drums and like all kinds of like other hand percussion and stuff. So it's not just like straight, you know, trap set drum, you know, jazz stuff. Really interesting, really cool. New jazz <laughs> from Hippie Town, Hippie Town, USA. So uh, yeah, make it rain, guys. Play that track, it's fantastic. <laughs> more water themes Jeff Lorber and his uh his water sign album his he had a sick fusion band uh Jeff Lorber this uh keyboardist here uh all his players are fantastic um but especially that song it's uh second on the B side called Rain Dance <laughs> it's super sick awesome like laid back funky fusion um there's some pretty magnificent trumpet uh, trumpet playing on that song throughout the whole album, but primarily it's these three, uh, this trio, and you know, lots of interjections by lots of different. Uh, yeah, Freddie Hubbard. Freddie Hubbard plays flugel. It's flugelhorn, not trumpet, sorry. Uh, Freddie Hubbard plays flugelhorn on this album. So, uh, yeah, get your, get your funk on. Some sweet, delicious fusion funky jazz in the morning time. Spin the rain dance song for us, everybody. <laughs> Here's one near and dear to my heart. Uh, nothing better than the feeling of that first rain. And it's almost always like clockwork. I say this to everybody around me and no one ever believes me. And everyone, you know, looks at me like I'm a, I'm a weirdo, but I'm a fucking born Willamette Valley Oregonian. I've been here my entire life, 43 years almost. Um, and yeah, patterns are shifting. Everything's a little weird. Uh, I'm speaking, you know, environmentally, you know, on a, on that scale, the natural scale, you know, you live in one place long enough, you really start to like, you know, get in with these cycles and feel the cycles. Um, things are a little bit pretty, pretty off. <laughs> um, but the rains come back and the temperatures chill almost like clockwork every year. And it generally is always the third, third and fourth week of October. Uh, every year. So we're kind of on the money, uh, but we really need this water, guys. So that first rain, that first breath, you know, that first uh, raindrop that hits your forehead. The cool, cool, clean water. Water. <laughs> Love this album by the Sons of the Pioneers. Um, this is one that is like, you know, reminds me of my family and uh, all of the old timers in my family were all just, you know, farmers and cow hens and stuff like that. So this is the type of music that was on when I was growing up around grandpa and grandma's house and, and my mother's family as well. You know, salt of the earth type people, hobos and tramps and farmers and cow hens. And, you know, that's, um, uh, that's what I come from. Good stuff. Some more of, you know, kind of familial sounds of uh, my family and, and uh, my place in the world. But um, this one's important. Uh, lots of themes surrounding, you know, the elements and uh, bringing the rains, the storm, the album called The Storm by The Moving Hearts. This is uh, pop music of the 80s, um, obviously mixed with, you know, Celtic um, Celtic undertones. I mean, it's all, it's not even undertones. It, it's straight up Celtic music, but you know, popularized, popularized Celtic music. These guys were made famous because they were the players that were the touring band for the troupe, um, Riverdance. And this was their music, their album that they were making before Riverdance was even a thing. This was like from the mid eighties, like 85, I think. Yeah. On um, Terror Records, straight out of Ireland. 
that's an import. Um, yeah, listen to the title track, The Storm. It's amazing. And a lot of them are just like, um, you know, what would you call it? Like a, um, not a montage, it's uh, whatever. It's just, you know, when they take a song and they just like insert uh, numerous different songs that all like, yeah, I guess that would be a montage, right? A musical montage. That's what a lot of these uh, songs are, is all traditional folk hits. And since they're all in the same key and they all are in the same, practically the same tempo and the same feel, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's Celtic music, you know, it's traditional folk uh, from Ireland, Scotland, English, you know, England and Wales. So it's all like, you know, <laughs> uh, swing, you know, uh, dotted eighth note, you know, swing tempo, triplet, <laughs> triplet oriented, you know, it can all, there are puzzle pieces that just all fit together so well. So you can take songs and just mash them all together and make one big giant uh, collaborative song. So that's what most of these songs are, is like eight, nine minute um, tracks. It's pretty fucking cool. So yeah, everybody spin this this morning. Bring the storm on us. Uh, this one's a stretch, but whatever. I love this album. I talk about it uh, quite a bit. Um, Ambrosia, really fantastic. Uh, you know, 70s kind of prog adjacent, um, mildly progish, mostly just this album. This album's pretty proggy, um, but this was their first, 1975, I think, 76. Um, but yeah, uh, I love this album. And the final track on the album, the very final one, that really, really soulful, uh, beautiful, beautiful song, uh, Drink of Water, it's called where he just talks about, it. it's it's really kind of deep actually. I put the lyric sheet on here because I wanted to just read the last stanza uh, for you guys. And um, just talking about, you know, life's, you know, turmoil and, and mysteries of the unknown and going through your life and trying to kind of like solve solve problems on your own and stuff. But it's it, like I said, it's a, it's a really soulful, beautiful, beautiful song. Um, very fitting for the final track on the album too. Uh, very last stanza. In our lives, we've all drank of the water, heard the ocean calling out our names. Some will seek and find their life's meaning, and some will turn their heads the other way. Spin that song, guys. It's really, really, really great. Drink of Water by the band Ambrosia. 74, actually, I think. It was off by a few years. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll hustle this up, guys, because i got to get to work. Um, this is kind of a rarity, kind of an oddity. Um, and even every time I like bring this up and try to talk about this group... It all gets jumbled up in my head because there's so many of these artists that all collaborate with each other that were all members of different groups and then had a bunch of solo stuff and it's it's all from Japan, you know what I mean? So names and situations all kind of get jumbled up in my head. Um, but these two guys, one of them was in the Yellow Magic Orchestra and the other one, I can't remember what he was doing, but he was involved with like some other, some other shit that was going on and, you know late 70s Japan um but they did a collaborative effort put a couple of albums out and called themselves um Inuyama Land uh because the names of the guys their their two names combined make the word Inoyama it's like Yamashita Yamashita um yeah Yasushi Yamashita and Makoto Ino Inoyu yeah so Inoyama Land um, anyway, it's got some really interesting, uh, almost kind of like, I mean, it's, it's electronic, ambient, you know, all kinds of weirdness, but, um, mixed with some really interesting kind of Krautrock flavors, uh, in the seven, late seventies and eighties, all throughout, 
um, Japan and Germany, they were kind of sharing a lot of like tit for tat ideas when it came to electronica and um, ambient music and stuff like that. So you have a lot of like Japanese music that was really reminiscent of, you know, like that, like I said, that kraut rock shit that was going on. Um, really fan fantastic. I love the shit out of it. But this album called Dan Zing Dan Poji Don uh, by the group Inoyama Land. Everybody check it out. It's fan fucking tastic. Uh, last track on the A side is just called Vasser. Vasser. Yeah, they. I mean, they even have like it's got the umlaut over the A and everything. You know what I mean? Like they were totally worshiping kraut rock in that era. Um, so yeah, everybody check it out. It's magnificent. Uh, cool fucking. <laughs> down the Vasser from the heavens. Um, last couple here, of course, wouldn't get very far without mentioning one of my very, 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 very favorite bands. Um, Prague, uh, jazz, rock, mastermind, camel. This was their album that they really broke out into kind of new territories away from, like they started out as like a jazz rock band, like, you know, reminiscent of just what was happening in the late 60s, like the doors and, you know, stuff like that. They were heavily influenced by, you could tell. Um, so they kind of tried to latch on that to that like early on in their career, but they just were trying to like hide what they truly were as these like super nerds from the UK. I think they were from like Surrey or something like that. Um, and the influence, you know, of the Canterbury and Prague and stuff like that. So they just went full blown Prague, you know, in like 75 with the snow goose and then kept going with that. But then, um, their uh their bass player left the band or whatever happened i'm not sure but then they got what's his butt richard sinclair richard sinclair from uh hatfield in the north and he came in and this was the first album with uh richard sinclair and another kind of like a facelift and you know it made them still like they were still super proggy but then like also had really cool elements of just kind of you know, 1977 was happening, you know, cocaine up everyone's nose and it's like, you know, disco dance, fun party type music mixed with prog. And it's just really effing cool. Um, album called Rain Dances. Uh, final track on the album uh, is the, the, the self-titled track. So self-titled, I mean, just the title track. <laughs> so yeah, everybody check out Rain Dances by Camel. Make it rain, bitches. All right, guys, signing off. Have a magnificent Friday. Have a wonderful weekend. And I'll uh, say goodbye with this one. This is like super nerd treat that I bring up all the time, but... Who doesn't love that wonderful video game, that classic Nintendo video game, The Legend of Zelda? Um, and this was, this is a soundtrack to the game, but not the original game. This was, I guess you could say, probably like the third game in the series uh, they brought out. Uh, no, fourth game. Whatever. Who cares? Uh, <laughs> for the Nintendo 64 in 1997-98, the game called The Ocarina of Time. Uh, all themed around kind of like, again, like elemental, you know, whatever, and the tunes reflect that. Um, there's a really, really fantastic tune on this. Um, it's the theme to the water temple. Um, and it just is, you know, reminiscent sounds of nature and, you know, drip dropping of waterfalls and uh, it's so beautiful. So... Yeah, I think if you probably just like, if you were to go on like YouTube or Spotify or something like that and just type in, um, this album is called Hero of Time is what it's called. It's titled Hero of Time, uh, soundtrack to the game Ocarina of Time. And the track is probably just titled uh, Water Temple, Water Temple theme or something like that. It's called Dark Waters. The track is called Dark Waters. Yeah.
Thanks for joining me, guys. Uh, whatever you uh, have in your heart and head, um, put your hands together and close your eyes and say a little uh, prayer for, uh, for the great state of Oregon. Make it rain. Uh, wash, wash the filth away. <laughs> put out the fires. So I can't breathe. <laughs> I've been getting terrible sleep. <clears throat> yeah, research this shit, man. It's terrible, the effects on the human circulatory system, respiratory system, everything from chronic inhalation of wildfire smoke in the air, uh, the particulates and whatever's, it's fucking me up. <laughs> Everybody, it's terrible. And just living, living life in a dark haze over the last month and a half has just been terrible it destroys all of our natural you know all of our natural everything's not just our environment but the, the natural like the economy of this state is all not not entirely dependent upon that type of stuff obviously our biggest industries are you know timber <laughs> timber and fucking you know seafood and whatever else but um you know, all the little things that go into what makes Oregon fantastic, especially Will Willamette Valley, Oregon, you know. Magnificent grapes for wine production. Magnificent hops for beer production. Uh, magnificent cannabis for all of your smoking pleasures. Um, and all that shit's being fucking ravaged by, you know, what's happening. All of your fucking shit gets ruined because it all tastes like wild wildfire smoke. They can't sell wine and they can't sell, you know, beer and cannabis and, and whatever else. So um, it's detrimental. It's horrible for um, for this state. So um, enough rambling from me. Uh, this is your pal Mage. Um, I'll see you tonight for another episode of uh, Thrilling Chilling Cinema. Um, horror films, doing my 13 favorite uh, suspense horror, you know, uh, Halloween movies. So join me every evening for uh, a little bit of a chit-chat about what I'm watching. And um, that's all I got for you. Peace in the crease, motherfuckers. <laughs>